We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. Oh, the shape that we were in. And just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table, come join the sinners who have been You know, I was at my uh, sister's house the other day, and I noticed it was there. First time I'd seen it in a long, long time. Brought back a lot of memories. I've forgotten that uh, she had that. It's an oblong shape. Around it were high back chairs, uh, still the straw woven seating. It's brown in color and had that uh, almost a lacquered finish on it. It was my mama's table. It's a table that we sat around for, for 50 years, 50 plus years. Now, I shared a little bit of this at the Northside Gathering. Uh, 
But if you're like me, I don't even remember what I talked about last week. Um, and I'm sure most of y'all won't remember either. Um, but I, I thought more about that table this week. You know, it was around that table we, we had celebrations, we had birthdays. Fifty years of pictures, and there was this god-awful wallpaper, I'm sorry. But it had pears and fruit of all kinds. It was a dark purple, and every birthday picture of every family member was on that, uh, was on that wallpaper and had that picture there of all that. It's around that table that, uh, hey, Mama made the basketball team. Hey, Mom, I'm starting tomorrow. Hey, Dad, I want you to meet my new girlfriend. Her name's Judy. I didn't bring any other girls around that table. Um, <laughs> hey, Mom and Dad, um, about two years later, we're getting engaged. What do you think about that? It's around that table. And I thought about it around that table. There was... Um, there was sadness, too. First day that, that we gathered after my mama had died, there was an empty chair there. There was no one sitting at her place. She sat on the, if you look at the oblong table, she sat on the, the second left. Why did she sit on the second left? That's the easiest way to get to the kitchen. Her room, her kitchen was eight by, uh, was ten by ten. It wasn't huge. And her, 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 the living room or the, the dining room or the kitchen area was right there next to it. And it was, about eight by, it was about eight by ten. It wasn't big. And the table was about all it could fit in there. It was at my dad's death that we decided to give that table to my sister. She had taken care of him these last few years that he lived in. And it meant more to her than to any, anybody else. And I'm glad that she's able to have that in her house. Because around that table, we learned guidance. We learned grace. Uh, we learned support. We got to know each other around the table. I know I'm an old fogey preacher, and um, I, I know that a lot of things that I say uh, sometimes can be misinterpreted. But I'm afraid today in our techno technological age and the way that we're advancing so quickly and we're trying to keep up so, so much that we've lost fellowship with one another. Our, our technology is making us feel more alone than connected. It's making us feel a distance from one another. Our social media has, has given us an ability to talk all the time, but we're not listening. And that's just my humble. I love technology, and I'm not saying, let's don't go back to the good old days. The good old days weren't all that good. You know, and how many of y'all like those rotary phones where you had to start with zero and die all the way around? And, and, you know, some of you young people talk to them, tell them what I'm talking about later because they don't know. Uh, you get your fingers stuck, and then you'd lose, you know, whatever. Uh, you'd call Aunt, Aunt uh, Jerry or somebody, Aunt Jerem, whatever. But, uh, you know, Around the table, it's where you come to understand each other. It's around the table. And that's a story that we're going to look at today. Uh, it's a story of uh, a walk to Emmaus. If you have your scriptures with you, it's in Matthew, Mark, it's in Luke. Uh, it's page 807 if you have your Bibles, page 807 if you want to look at your Bibles. If you're streaming online, it's in the New Testament. It's, uh, you look at Matthew and Mark and... And then Luke, uh, and it's available for you. But I, I want to read a little bit of this for you. Uh, this talks about what happened around the table. And it's from Luke 24, uh, starting with verse 13. And I'll, I'll add some comments on the way. If everybody, it's on page 807. Okay. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem now. To hear everybody get the story right, it's, it's the day of Easter. Uh, Christ had resurrected that morning, but people were tr still trying to figure it out. And these two traveling companions had left Jerusalem, and they were on their way back to Emmaus. They were walking to Emmaus. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? 
They stopped their, uh, they stopped their faces downcast. Then one named Cleopas replied, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there, that have taken place there over the last few days? It's like Cleopas saying, have you just come from behind a rock or something? I'm sorry, I just had to add that. Uh, you know, what is, what is it you don't understand? What, where have you been? Why don't you catch this? And, and, and Jesus said to him, what things? And they said to him, the things that, about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these happen, things happened about three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early in the morning, and they didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. And some of those who were with him went to the tomb and found things just as the women had said. They, didn't, they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you, your dull minds keep you from believing all the prophets talk about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then he interpreted them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through the prophets. And then they came to Emmaus, and he acted as if he were going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, it's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And after he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire as he spoke to us along this road and when he explained the scriptures to us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem, they found the eleven and their companions gathered. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two, the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. Revelation happens around the table. Now, revelation is a word that we don't use a lot, but revelation is simply, uh, simply a revealing of God's self to God's people. It's revealing God to God's people. That revelation is, is, is something that God does. Revelation is a gift. You can't force it. You can't make it happen. You can't say, well, I'm going to pray more and I'm going to study more and I'm going to, I'm going to do this and this and God's going to reveal God's self to me. Revelation is simply a gift where God chooses to reveal God's self to us at different times and different places in our lives. And I think about this this morning. If you come to this table in, in just a few moments, it's often at this table where God reveals God's self, around the communion table, that God reminds you and I that we are loved. And I know that I say this often, but I want you to hear it one more time. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. You can't get God's attention. You can't do more stuff. You, you can't be it to the point where you have to make God love you more. And there's nothing that you have done will make God love you less. God's love is not based on our actions, on who we are and who we think we are. Some of you this morning are carrying around so much guilt. You blew it this week. You messed up. You failed. You... You, you, you did some things you wish you wouldn't have done. You said some things. You, you, you blew it. And you can continue to beat yourself up and, and wear yourself out. Or you can come to this table and find freedom and grace. Where God says, I love you. And I ask you to accept that love. To receive that love. To acknowledge that love. And to be assured of that love. It's at the table. That you come and find that. Now it's at the table, something else happens with Revelation. It's around the table that, that we see new realities. I, I thought of these two disciples. They had, they had gone from, from, from fear to faith. They had gone from, joy, uh, from sorrow to joy. They had, they had gone from hopelessness to hope. They, they had gone from seeing nothing to seeing everything. They had gone from being blind to having their eyes open when Jesus 
blessed the bread and broke it and shared it with them. See, we have new realities when we come to the table. I've been there before, and this week has been, been a good week, but there have been weeks that I've been so mad about, at God and so mad at everything else and so looking to the future that I was afraid of the future, and I was afraid, you know, what blessings do I have? What do I have to be thankful for? And some of you this morning need to stop and realize what you do have to be thankful for. Look around you. Open your eyes to what God is doing for you, what God has done for you. Don't let the future cause you to be so afraid that you lose sense of who you are right now. There's a point sometimes that we're so focused on the future that we forget to live in the now and be glad for what God has given us in the now, what God has done for us in the now, what God is doing for us now, how God has graced us and blessed us and helped us. We don't look to where God is now. We don't open our eyes to the present reality. We have to have it, well, I'll be, it'll be when I get things better, then I'll be thankful. When things get in a different place, I'll be glad. When, when things are going better, then I'll rejoice. And it's never going to happen because there's always something that's going to wobble in your life. There's always something that's not going to be right. There's always something that isn't where it should be. It's either your job or uh, some relationship or something going on with your family. There's something in your life that's never going to be perfect. And if you wait, it never will come, in my humble opinion. Some of you this morning are keeping secrets. You're, you're, you're carrying around these, these, these burdens and, and, and these attitudes of, of, of the, you know, that secret anger, that what that person did to you at work or what somebody did to you in your family or what somebody did to you at your church and, and, and you don't open your eyes to the grace that you have been forgiven and you are called to be people of forgiveness. We come to the table to remember who we are and whose we are. We come to the table to stop playing this game called Christianity and start acting like we truly believe that you and I are forgiven. Do we believe it, church? And do we live it? It's around the table we come and say, I, I acknowledge this and I accept it. And I no longer want to carry this burden with me or I no longer want to carry this attitude that's destroying me and destroying those around me. This negative attitude that is, is creeping into my, my workspace, into my home life, into my church, I want to let go of it. This, this anger or this bitterness or resentment. We come to this table to, to open our eyes to new realities that God is with us. Some of you this morning feel so alone. And you think that God has forgotten you, but he hasn't. You think that you, you, you've tried as hard as you can and, and whatever you're trying, it always seems to fall apart, but it's not. Our failures are not final. And God is not through working amidst the chaos. And you walk into the future filled with such fear that you forget that God is already there ahead of you, calling you and knowing that he will give you what you need to face the future. Call it Pollyannish as you want to. I'm, I'm getting into this ministry so long and I've been doing it so long. I, I, I've grown weary of trying to, 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 to make it so delicate. I truly believe that God is with you. And no, you can't see it. And no, you can't identify it. I do believe that God is there waiting on you. It's around the table that you find encouragement and strength. I'll share with you. How many of y'all know Richard Edwards? Some of you, he's a minister in the Holston Conference and, and is retired now. But, but Richard and I were in, in uh, seminary together and, and we shared in, in the same conference and, and all. You know, it was around the table that I found strength and encouragement from him. We were both relocating churches. And we'd sit around the table at Old Charlie's in Farragut. Anybody have been to Old Charlie's in Farragut? I don't know if it's still there. But we'd go around the table in Old Charlie's in Farragut. And we'd cry together. We'd pray together. We'd give praise to God together. We shared life around that dinner table at O'Charlie's. You know, it was at that table 
that Richard saved my life and saved my ministry. And Judy knows that. Because as around that table that he often reminded me that God had called me. And it was around that table that I reminded him that God had called him too. See, around that table we find community. We find relationship. In a home group, I would encourage you, Helen was sharing with me this morning about her home group, and she's talking about I have Presbyterian, we have a Catholic, we have somebody who hasn't been to church in a while, and blah, blah. She's going through all this, and she's sharing all these tables that she's gathered around her home group. I would encourage you to be in a home group or a Sunday school or a fellowship class of something where you're finding connection with people around you, that you find others that will live life with you and share life with you that will encourage you and support you. It's around the table we find community. It's not only at the communion table, it's at the coffee table. It's at a, it's at the, a restaurant in, in, in O'Charlie's. It's the places of the table we find and support one another. To me, that's what the church is. It's here on Sunday morning in worship. This is just a small part. The church is gathering around the table where we support and we encourage one another. We lift one another up in prayer and we remind each other that we're not alone, that there are people with us that will stand with us, that will pray with us, that will that'll, that'll be there with us in our darkest hours and our best hours. It's around that table we find reconciliation and forgiveness. You know, I, I thought about I didn't really like that, that table a lot times in my life because it was around that table that we talked about report cards. <laughs> and it was around that table that my, my, my brother and I, my sister and I didn't fight a whole lot. She was about six years younger than I was, and I was moved on some other things. But my brother and I were always fighting, always, constantly. And she'd all, my mom would always bring us to the table and say, okay, we're going to work this out. We're going to sit here until you tell each other that you love each other. And she'd say, she'd say now, now, brother, tell your, tell, your brother, tell your brother Mark that you love him. And Mike would say, I, I, I don't love you, brother. Then he'd say, say it. He'd go, I, I love you, brother. Mean it. I love you, brother. And she'd turn to me and say, Mark, and I was just trying to follow suit. Tell your brother you love him. I don't love you, brother. Say it. I love you, brother. And she, she made us choose to love one another. My greatest fear is that we become so isolated from one another, we don't have time to be in fellowship and relationship. And I think that the thing that they've done with this journey service that, that Ryan and his team has done to create three minutes, uh, it doesn't sound like much, but use this time intentionally to grow to know each other. It's not wasted time. It's a time to communicate with one another and support one another. How many of you all are here today because somebody invited you? Don't raise your hand. How many of you are here today because somebody came over to your house and sat with you when you were crying and sat when you were in pain? How many of you are here when somebody reached out to you and said, I care about what's going on in your life. I'm praying for you. I care what's happening in your life. I want to be there to support you. How many of you are here today because someone else cared for you? And if you're not here today because of that, use that opportunity to go out and care for those who aren't caring. Find ways to care for the others around you. Open your heart and find ways to invite and share and be that person that goes out. See, it's around the table you find community. You know, would you mind... I've got a couple of other things. Is it okay if I go ahead? Do y'all? If you say no, you're going to hurt my feelings. So uh, uh, I'll go ahead. How about that? It's around the table that we break down barriers. A really pro a concern I have in this world today is that we are so worried about strife and division and the troubles in our world, maybe if we'd spend more time around the table talking with each other and not talking to each other, we would find how much we have in common. 
Maybe we find out that we're not so much different from one another, that we do have things that around the table that we can work out. But it's not by yelling at each other and screaming at each other and forming sides. It's saying, I really want to come to the table, and I want to find out who you are and what you are. Maybe if we find out those things, we can stop with our labels and stop identifying people as, as, as better than us or worse than us, as more spiritual or less spiritual, as a part of the crowd or not part of the crowd. Maybe around the table we can find a strength and a hope together and a unity that only God can give us around the table. Who's not welcome around your table right now? You know, who is it that, that you wouldn't want to be around the table with? Now, we say when we're in church, we're all good church people, but who is it that when you really identify, if you had to sit with at the table, if you had to share, share a mata drink with around, around the, uh, you'd say, no, I don't think so. Who is it that is not welcome around your table? I've got to be honest with you, for a long time, I, I had certain people I wouldn't want around my table. And, and God has worked with me that and, and changed me in that and, 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 and helped me to see that more and more people are welcome around that table. And we talk about this table. Who is it that God doesn't welcome to this table? And if God welcomes to this table, then who are we to say no? But in our own lives, do we welcome or do we, we already set barricades and I, I can't love you because you're a, I can't love you because you believe this. I can't love you because you act this way. I can't love you because you've made these choices. It's around the table. You know, it's interesting. It was in, around the table that I came to understand refugees is different. They they're not, weren't just coming to, to try to find a place to, to make it and make everybody else support them and make everybody else make their life better. They were s struggling to, to live their life. They were just trying to survive. It was around the table that I got to know more about uh, the refugees from Costa Rica. It's around the table that, that I got to see a, an African family that gave us their only meal for the day, and they gave it so generously and with so much joy that it was around the table that I was humbled because of how much I really had and how little I really wanted to give. It's around the table, and there are many Isra Israelis that are doing the same thing and searching for a peace process and doing a, a wonderful job with that, but it's around the table I, I met and, and ate with Palestinians, and I heard their story about their conflict and about their side and about what they're dealing with. It's around the table that you begin to break down walls and break down barriers, and often we can't spend time around the table because it takes too much effort. I invite you, you know, as you come to this table to hear what the sidewalk Walt Prophets, uh, we, we played that song earlier, but here's what it says. To the thief and to the doubter, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young, to the older, to all who hunger and all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princess, all who fail, uh, you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost one another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow and all who lead. Anyone who's been let down, all the lost who you have been found, and all who have been labeled right or wrong, everyone here who hears this song, just come to the table. Come join the sinners. You've been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. And so this morning I offer you a chance to come to the table, to come and be a part of this fellowship. Come and receive grace and revelation. Jesus invites you to encounter him and be encountered by him as you come to this place. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for the love that you've given to us and to the hope that you've offered to us. I pray that we come to this table now You've invited us. In Christ I ask it. Amen.